Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal Essentials. It has been quite a long time since we had the last Eternal Essentials, but there's something that I have been wanting to do for quite some time and I'm gonna start with it now. And that is a series about um, yeah, some very timeless and fundamental uh, theory writing in magic from like almost 20, start, that started like around 20 years ago and that a lot of it is still valuable and worthwhile today and also applies to eternal um, either vaguely or exactly so there's a lot to learn and to dig into for people that uh, have not come from a magic background or have come from a magic background but never dug that deep into it to brush up on their theory crafting and their theory background and educate themselves a lot about understanding the game and its concepts and deck building better. So I, th I think this is a really great opportunity for anyone out there uh, interested in learning and improving themselves at understanding and playing the game. So let's dive right in. Of course I will be linking all these articles in the description of the video so you can check them out. I will just briefly mention them and tell you what they roughly are about and then you can read them for yourselves. So this is a series um, called The Schools of Magic by Rob Hans from uh, 1996 as you can see so more than 20 years ago. Uh, I think it was first published on Dojo and there is a project called ClassicDojo.org that hosts most of the like old Dojo articles and for anyone that doesn't know it, the Dojo used to be the prime a source and hub for people discussing early magic theory and crafting theories and concepts for the game and advancing the theor uh, theory crafting and like the whole yeah understanding of the game basically. And yeah, this um, has a bunch of parts. You can check them here and just read them in succession. Um, it has an introduction, defines some basic. Uh, terms and concepts that are also very usable to date still and in Eternal. Talks about some principles of deck building, sideboarding and the theory of deck speed. Um, so yeah, this is some very uh, like essential and basic stuff to dig into, but uh, pretty insightful I think if uh, you haven't read anything of the sort and might also find some stuff in there that you vaguely understood or found int sort of intuitive but didn't quite grasp or weren't like fully formulating or aware of and there you have like a a nice uh, groundwork basically. Next off we have a re republication of another old Dojo article by Eric. I don't remember his last name either so uh, we gotta leave it at Eric for now. Um, this article um, dives further into the concepts of tempo and card advantage and tries to like grasp and understand and formulate them. It is a reasonably long piece, but not that long. It's just a one piece article that um, further expands on some concepts. So uh, definitely a nice read and it builds upon some stuff that I will share with you in another video. So I'm just trying to like sort of, I think I have around 20 plus articles bookmarked for this purpose and try to like kind of group them and yeah share them with you in a reasonable yeah like bundle and order basically so you can dig through them <laughs> and yeah then we have one of the most well arguably most well known and essential <clears throat> yet short um, articles of magic history Mike Floor's legendary Who's the Beatdown. It's about evaluating um, your role in a given game and in a given uh, state of a game. Like You might start the game as being the aggressor, but at a certain point you might turn into uh, yeah, the, control, the control deck, the deck that has to prolong the game and uh, wins by dragging out the game rather than trying to end it fast and how to evaluate that and re-evaluating that and what, what these things mean and what the consequences of 
proper evaluation of this is in how you should play um, the game. And that is very independent of deck. Like it's not about um, a specific deck. These assessments apply to any deck. Like any deck can be the beatdown or not the beatdown in a given matchup that very much depends on the texture of both decks facing each other and even potentially the texture of the game that you are in. And this is very, very essential to properly strategize and yeah, like tactical and strategical play in uh, games to properly understand your role. And as it says here in uh, in bold, which is the the most uh, important, um, yeah, assumption and truth of the article is that usually if you misassign the role you are in, you will lose the game more often than not. So it's very essential to winning a game to properly assessing your role. Because if you're being aggressive when you shouldn't be, you will most likely lose because of it. If you're not aggressive when you shouldn't be, you will most likely lose because of it. And that applies even to control decks, for example. So yeah, this is a very, very uh, essential and timeless piece that will help any player in basically any a remotely similar card game. This goes beyond Eternal. This is the type of stuff that is applicable to any sort of one-on-one -on -one, uh, card game where one player wins by defeating the other, be it uh, Hearthstone, be it the Elder Scrolls Legends, be it Eternal, um, be it Pokemon, be it Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a timeless piece that applies to any uh, 1v1 or like where two parties um, fight games because it also applies to like teams versus teams and stuff as long as there's like two sides basically and then there is a newer article um, eight core principles of who's the beatdown where he basically um, like more than 10 years later tries to further expand on this very short concept piece of who's the beatdown and yeah delve deeper into it <coughs> build upon it um, formulate it more and explain it deeper and dissect it and stuff. Um, as always, there will be a lot of magic related um, yeah, references here and cards, but a lot of them are linked and hyperlinked, so you can check them. And some of them you don't fully have to know or understand to understand the underlying concept or principle that he talks about. But yeah, at worst, you have to Google some cards and get a to get a better idea of what he's talking about, but a lot of it is not that dependent on cards. And yeah, then we have Chad Ellis, The Danger of Cool Things. That's also a very good lesson, especially for a lot of newer players and players that come to games with a bit of a casual um, attitude, but still trying to like improve themselves and become better. And yeah, um, it basically talks about how dangerous it is um, in terms of winning and succeeding to just wanting to do cool things. Because, um, yeah, in the end, nobody cares if the things you do are cool or not. The only thing that matters is the outcome of the game. And if not doing cool things gets you there more often and more reliably and faster than drop the cool things because trying to do cool things can significantly dilute your uh, deck and your performance and so on. And this dives into um, into yeah, like trying to better understand what cool things are and how, what like two cool things are and um, what the uh, yeah, dangers of doing things and considering things that are not actually necessary can have and yeah, basically uh, reminds you to try and focus on the right things and be more minimalist and try to do less cool and flashy things and focus on yeah, being effective. Um, next we have a nice article um, related to um, mana, or in this case, power bases, five rules for avoiding mana screw, where he 
delves deeply into uh, power base or like mana base construction and color balancing, uh, land count balancing, and all these things are um, in general relevant and valuable for Eternal's power and influence system as well. Although they are not one by one applicable, there are differences and there are approximations, but the general principles and core ideas still apply and hold true. You just have to adjust for the differences in the game. But yeah, it's a pretty nice piece still to check out and get a better, yeah, like fundamental understanding of uh, power base building, I think. And last but not least, we have um, another very good uh, theory piece from the from back in the dojo times of Svi Moshovitz. He is one of the um, greats of magic theory um, articles, and there will be a bunch more of his articles in uh, later parts of the series. This is the first one to start. He is one of the people that, especially after the dojo times, has provided so much uh, intelligent and helpful uh, lessons and theory crafting and concepts to magic that um, I can only recommend everyone basically read everything Svi Moshevitz ever wrote about magic theory because it will only make you smarter and better at understanding and playing the game and especially building decks and selecting decks like every aspect of the game really the guy is a master he's pretty genius I mean he he didn't uh, get rich with sports betting for no reason he basically uh, to tell that little anecdote he basically as far as I know um, was confident enough to think that he is the smartest person in the room when the room is the entire world of sports betting to just keep heavily uh, sports betting with basically all he could afford um, with the like assumptions and systems or whatever that he had come up with until he uh, basically became rich off of sports betting and uh, Pinnacle Sports, I think, eventually hired him because they could not beat him. They, he just kept crushing them and making lots of money off of uh, betting against them and they eventually hired him and now he's like in a leading position at the company um, as far as I know and mostly just does it because he really enjoys it and is really good at it, not because he financially has to. Um, so yeah, he is just in general a really smart person and for a long time he spent a lot of this, those smarts on magic and shared them with the community and prov uh, like brought forth a lot of great articles and concepts. This one uh, talks about a specific card and uh, strategy in magic that is only uh, used as like a like an uh, example or a base to uh, build on the uh, to establish the concept of the fundamental turn, which talks about um, yeah what what the fundamental like the critical turn of a deck is and how these things uh, impact uh, how how to try and determine what the fundamental turn of your deck is and then uh, draw proper consequences from that knowledge in terms of how to build the deck and how to play the deck um, to better understand a deck and optimize it. So that is um, another really helpful concept both in deck building and in piloting and that for now covers all the um, yeah classic dojo <coughs> um, articles that establish some more like fundamental concepts and some uh, deck building stuff. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the read. It's quite a lot to read, but I know there are people out there that really are looking for this type of stuff and appreciate it. I talked about this in general and these articles on stream like a long time ago and had them bookmarked ever since and wanted to do these videos for a long time. And I hope the people that um, yeah, that we're around on that stream waiting for it are still around and finally get it and hopefully enjoy it. And some of them already read the articles when I posted them 
during the stream anyway. And there's hopefully and probably a lot more people out there that uh, will really appreciate uh, this type of material and will gladly devour it to uh, become better card players. Um, this type of stuff is what provided me with so much education and knowledge and wisdom about the game and understanding of the game over the last like 15 years or whatever that I played Magic uh, more or less competitively and tried to become better at understanding the game and better at building decks, tuning decks, selecting decks, all the aspects of the game. So um, this is a great opportunity for anyone to become a better player. All right, you can find all the articles down here in the description, so you can check them out. I'll post all the links in there. And yeah, there will be uh, probably one or two more videos of this sort to provide um, additional articles, some of that that build on this or just expand or even uh, conquer new concepts and develop new ideas. Um, in the future. So if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to like down below and subscribe to the channel to not miss the future parts of this or any other content. And check out my social media and my stream over here. Follow me on Twitter and on Twitch and like my Facebook to stay up to date and help my social media presence grow. All right. Uh, that's it for the first Eternal Essentials on Timeless Magic articles timeless magic uh, content that is still relevant and helpful today even to a different game like Eternal since it has the same structure as a game as magic does. All right, I'm Manu S. This was Eternal Essentials, timeless magic writings. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Bye.